Jesse Scarpio. <coughs> uh, Council, uh, you're familiar with the Millennium Development Goals. Yeah, yes, Your Honor. Now, uh, there are eight Millennium Development Goals, and all the members of the United Nations, 189 countries, adopted the Millennium uh, Development Goals, correct? Yes, Your Honor. And they have uh, agreed to adopt legislative and executive measures to accomplish those goals by 2015, correct? That's, yes, Your Honor. Uh, two years from now. Now, two of the Millennium Goals are reduction of infant mortality and reduction of maternal mortality, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Now, since worldwide all countries are agreed, all governments are agreed on these goals, would you agree with me that there is a compelling state interest in the attainment of these goals? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, a compelling state interest can prevail over religious beliefs, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Now, let me go again to some other basic points. Uh, we presume every law to be constitutional, correct? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, because we have that presumption, anybody who questions the constitutionality of a law must point to a specific provision that is being violated, correct? Yes, Your Honor. That means you cannot question the constitutionality of a law Hypothetically, you cannot speculate, correct, the yes. general rule. Yes, Your Honor. And we have the exception, a very narrow exception. You can facially attack the constitutionality of a law under what conditions? One of the conditions is you have to prove that under all circumstances, the law will be unconstitutional, correct? Yes, That's one of the conditions under all or nearly all circumstances or set of facts, the law will be unconstitutional. That is one of the conditions to facially attack a law, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Now, we go to the RH law. Uh, you have a menu of uh, devices, drugs, contraceptives to prevent uh, fertilization. Now, under the theory of all of the parties here are petitioners are mounting a facial attack, correct? Yes. Sir. This is a facial attack. And so the burden of the petitioners will be very high because they have to overcome the presumption of constitutionality and they have to prove that under all circumstances the law will be unconstitutional. Yes, okay. sir. So you have a menu of contraceptives, from the IUD to the condom to the uh, uh, hormonal contraceptives, okay. If you use condom, definitely it will not violate RH law, correct? Everybody is agreed. There is no violation. Yes, Your Honor. If you use uh, vasectomy, I don't think anybody can mount a facial challenge, correct? Yes, Your Honor. There are other methods, like the heat method. You know the heat method? No, Your Honor. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. The heat method is if the, if the temperature of the sperm exceeds 35 degrees Celsius, the sperm will not be able to fertilize the ovum. So you apply that on the male. You heat the balls of the male. Okay, and you have the uh, ultrasound method. What is the ultrasound method? I, I am not familiar. The same thing. You, you put the ultrasound on the uh, organ that generates the sperm, and that will work the same way. The temperature will rise, and the sperm will not be able to fertilize. So there are contraceptives that are applied to the male. You have heard of the vasal gel which is now on third uh, phase clinical trials, and they plan to release it by 2015. It's a male contraceptive. So you will not have a problem of possibly co committing uh, abortion because the contraceptive is in the male. So you have a situation here where there are a lot of 
situations where the law can surely be constitutional. You cannot question condom, vasectomy, and others. So, would you agree with me that a facial attack on this, uh, on this law requires the petitioners to prove to us that under all circumstances, under all sets of facts, there is a possibility of an abortion? Yes, Your Honor. Because that is their point. Okay. So that is a very high bar because the, the petitioners could have gone to FDA and questioned particular drugs. But you have mounted, the petitioners have mounted a facial attack and the bar is very high. Okay, let us go to section 9. It says uh, that uh, the national drug formulary shall include hormonal contraceptives, intrauterine devices, injectables, and other safe, legal, and non-abortificent and effective family parenting products. So, section 9 says the hormonal contraceptive must be safe, legal, and non-abortificent. And who will determine this under Section 4A? The FDA. The FDA, because under Section 4A, it is the FDA that will determine whether it's an abortificent or not. Yes, Your Honor. So you have to interpret Section 9 in relation to Section uh, 4A and to the general powers of FDA to determine before the drug can be allowed to be sold, they have to determine that it is safe. Correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, Counsel. That's all. Okay, uh, Justice Carby will ask the last set of questions. Yeah, I just have one question, Counsel. Uh, section 24 on penalties. It says any violation of this act or commission of the foregoing prohibited acts shall be penalized by imprisonment and so on. So, so any violation of this act or of any provision of Section 23 shall be penalized by imprisonment, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Because the prohibited acts are those mentioned in Section 23. My problem, counsel, is if you go to Section 7, it says all accredited public health facilities shall provide a full range of modern family planning methods. So if an accredited public health facility, like a hospital, cannot provide the full range of modern family planning methods because they don't have the money in the meantime, then they will now be penalized by imprisonment and their officers will suffer for that. So isn't that too overbroad, counsel, the phrase any violation of this act? I have no problem with any violation of the foregoing prohibited acts in Section 23. My problem is when you say any violation of any provision of this act, you have so many provisions here which says this party shall provide a full range. The, the government shall guarantee a family, uh, a, a minimum family wage. Who will be penalized and how can you penalize? So would you agree with me that this is too overbroad, the phrase, any violation of this act? The rest can, 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 can be sustained because very specific, only Section 23. We, we respectfully argue, Your Honor, that Section 7 is not a specific target of a prohibited act. But we, we agree with you that in that sense, it is overbroad. But in, in the interpretation, Your Honor, this Honorable Court has always interpreted laws to, to have effect. And, and the example is it, it's commonplace, I would submit, that many of the laws we have will have a penal provision which says for any violation of this act. For example, the, the Corporation Code. But in, in actual uh, practice, Your Honor, when there is a prosecution based on any provision of the act, then, you know, the, 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 this court will, will have, as the court of last resort, still have the opportunity to make sure 
that overbroad provisions. Uh, yeah, because be one of the issues raised by petitioners is they're afraid now uh, because uh, any violation of any provision here will be uh, covered by a penalty, imprisonment. We, we understand, Your Honor. We'll, okay, that's all, Counselor. We'll cover that in our memoranda. Thank you. There being no further uh, question or comment from any of my colleagues, the session is hereby adjourned to resume next Tuesday, same time, same venue.